Is it Robert or Robert Young? Because I got both. No, it's whatever you... What, what would your mother call you? Is what I... Robert Young. Okay. So uh, I was given a great bit of uh, biography for all of the speakers today. And it sounds so great. And there's so many big words in there. So I thought, okay, screw that. Uh, I'm going to go online. I'm going to do my own research. And Good. What I'm not going to do is blow your story. You're more Whatever than, you want. You're more than capable of blowing your own story. You don't <laughs> need me to do that for you. Um, but I did find something in your, in your online bio history profile, whatever you want to call it, that, that intrigues me. And I, I think it plays into your story. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use it as the, uh, as the opening. I see that you're, you're forming a collective of 50 entrepreneurs and you want to build 25 serious startups in the next five years. Yes. Wow. That's pretty ambitious. Now, I know you look and feel like a small audience. And I know you probably just had dinner, so you're feeling a little bit right now. But I'm going to ask you guys one small favor. It's really hard to be on stage without a warm welcome. And I want you to make a warm welcome so warm that people <laughs> in the other side of the auditorium look around and go, holy shit, what's going on What's over happening there? here? There we go. Come on. Oh, yes. <laughs> Robert Jan, the stage is yours. If thank you, you very much. questions, just send me out to the audience. Yeah, no problem. Guys, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Even if it's a small audience, I still love it to be here. It's, I wander around and I see the campus and all the little booths, people sleeping, or I, I, I think, right now. Um, but before I start, I want to ask you one simple question. Do you know why you are born? Any hands for people who know why they are born? No? That's one. What's your reason? When a mummy and a daddy love each other very much. <laughs> it's a good answer. Thank you. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. A actually, it was Mark Twain who said there are two moments in your life in which actually they are most important. One is the moment you get born, right? And the other moment is when you know why. And I'm going to talk with you about my story and, I, and the reason why I put up my finger and the reason why he says, listen, this crazy guy is going to build 25 companies with 50 entrepreneurs. And in that story, I'm going to answer the question on how not to fail because that's what that's it was in the booklet, right? So I'm trying to answer your question, how not to fail with your company. But before I'm going to continue, I'm going to tell you my personal story. And my story started actually after the mil new millennium. Eh? That was the moment the bubble burst. Every, every startup in, let's say, Silicon Valley ran, ran out of money. And it was a shitstorm. That was the moment I started my first company. And I knocked at a lot of doors. And actually, there was no VC opened. And I could not build my company. At, at the moment, I think it was 12 months later, one opened the door. And it, this guy was an entrepreneur, and he invested a little bit of money in me, and he gave a ton of information. So he really helped me out. Actually, I, at that moment, I was not sure what it actually meant for me as a person, how it changed my life. Three years ago, I learned. That was the moment I was pretty sick. Um, at that moment, I was even thinking... Maybe I'm going to die on this damn thing. That was the moment I was thinking about why I am here and what do I love. And what was it that really struck me over the times there? And for me, it was entrepreneurship and young people. So that was the moment I started thinking about Holland Startup. Can I help young entrepreneurs succeed with their business? That's what we do at Holland Startup. So three years ago, I started a new company called Holland Startup, in which we try and help entrepreneurs succeed with their business. And before I go to, let's say, um, the failure part, I'm going to tell you what we do within Holland Startup, so not to sell this thing, because that's my own project and there's no, nothing for me to sell, but just to give you an idea of why we have set up Holland Startup in such a way 
it prevents failure. Right? So within Holland Startup, what do we have? We have roughly an idealist containing at this moment 85 different business concepts in which they are, let's say, more or less pre-tested on the market. Right? That does not mean they are validated. They are not yet successful. But we have an idea that there is some pain in some situation or s market segments which we would love to solve. Right? The second part what we do is we build teams. And we will build teams of young graduates. So we run programs at Dutch universities to get in contact with a lot of young people, bright minds, and to build world-class startup teams consisting of two entrepreneurs with them. So that's the recruitment part. So we have an idea, we recruit people, and then we provide an 18 months building process for which let's say roughly transforms any idea into a successful company. And it runs from 100 days, 300 days to 540 days. Why is it in this sequence? Because in the first 100 days, we focus on getting the problem clear. Many startups fail for the simple reason they do not know what the problem is they're trying to solve. Something needs to be broken. If there's nothing broken, you cannot solve it. So that's the first part. The second part is building a product or a solution to solve that first issue, right? And then the last period in time is just scaling to customers, sell it, building a better product, sell it, and then gain more traffic and raise a little bit of extra capital. So that's the third part. The last part we provide is, let's say, the funding. And that means that each individual startup we will raise for them a first, let's say, angel round, roughly 200k. And then after 18 months, we will raise a seed round of roughly 500k. And then they need to do it themselves. Or we will support them later on if needed. But for now, our program runs for 18 months. So this is, let's say, about Holland Startup. Any questions about something? The startups by itself or the individuals? Both. Um, Robert, what was the question? The, the, the question was, how do we select individuals or startups? We only select individuals, right? Because we like to see individuals work, execute, because they're all smart. Everybody in here is smart enough to build a company. That's not the issue. The question is, can they work together? Because we believe that you need to build a team of people, right? So we spent roughly three months to identify people and skill sets so they can merge. Okay? Answering your question? Good. So that's what we do. Um, and by building, let's say, Holland Startup by itself and all the entrepreneurs in there, you get something extra in which we believe this is probably the most powerful thing, and that's a collective of startup founders. People with the same mindset, building companies, running against problems, solving the issues, and work together and help each other build their company. So that's why I thrive, and that's why I want to build 50, let's say 25 companies with 50 entrepreneurs to build also the collective, right? So I think that's for now enough about actually Holland Startup because I want to talk about this. On this screen, you see, let's say, the big things why startups fail. And I'm going to focus on the early, let's say, the bigger part on there. Um, you can look it also up. This is just a, a picture of CB Insights. CB Insights, they track and trace uh, startups and scale-ups uh, during their ride. Um, and what they have done, it's actually a data company, um, so they, they measure why startups fail. This is what they come out. And I will explain you what we have done to minimize this risk. And by explaining how we did it, I think you can learn to do it for yourself. Right? So the first thing why startups fail is that there is no market need. 
So we have a great idea. We start building on it for, let's say, six months. We ship it to the customer, and then else the customer doesn't buy. Right? No market need. You will fail. So what we do is we spend not on the solution part days, weeks, and months. We spend roughly 100 days on the problem side. Why? Because we want to understand what is broken in the segment, in the system. Each individual system, for example, Uber, they investigated, let's say, the system of taxi industries, right? And they thought this is broken. And why is it broken? Travis, the, the CEO, explained on Tuesday in his keynote that it is broken be because si taxis have a license system. And you have a fixed number of licenses which you give in a certain city. It doesn't grow, the number of licenses. But the population grows. So at the end, system doesn't work out. So they try to build a new system through Uber. So they find out that there is a system constraint which kills the whole system. You need to think pretty hard what is broken in your market segment. I will explain you later how you could do it. How you can understand what system you're in and where it is broken. Okay? So we spent roughly 100 days on it. And I noticed, to be totally honest, after roughly 60 days, we pivot and continue on other problems. But primarily on the data we collected. So roughly we need 125 days to get a clear understanding of the problem and start solving it. Okay? Second part is run out of money. Or cash, actually. There are two ways to get cash. Sell your product or go to a venture capitalist. We do the first part. And later the second part. It sounds easy, but it's always tough. I don't know how to solve this for you. It's just call, call, call and try to get a first launching customer in. Even if the product is not there, try to sell it. Sell him a story and ask if he's able to invest on your product as a first paying customer. And you will notice big corporates, they do it. If they see a startup which could solve their issue, they are more than wel welcome to pre-finance your project. Okay? Now you don't have to go to a VC. Um, we do it by, let's say, having a network of also investors around Holland Startup and they provide the initial angel round. Uh, not the right team. I already explained it was actually your question. We share a ton of time on people, talking with them, understanding their skill sets, but also talk about, let's say, stuff you d normally do not talk about as a person. What is your passion? Why do you want to build this company? Do you want to build a company just for lifestyle? So I need a certain amount of money during a month to just do my stuff, live, eat, drink, go to a beer. Right? Or do you want to build a company which is scalable through Europe or on a global scale? It's a different question, or the same question with a different answer. Be aware of the answer. Right? Because if you have a team and one wants to just build a nice company and the other one wants to build a global company, it doesn't fit. So think about your team members. What do they do? Do you have somebody who can build a product for you? Do you have somebody who can sell it to a customer? Do you, know, do you have something about, let's say, marketing kind of things? You need to think about these issues and spend time on it. Any questions up until now? Good. Yes. Yeah. It, it it's not the preferred way. Um, so, so for those in the audience, the question was, do the, do the teams ever change during the process? Yeah. Wh what primarily, what, what, we, what happens with us is that you have an individual who knocks on the door and says, listen, I want to build a company, right? Um, so the same with you guys. You want to build a company, you want to build a company, but then you need to build a team, right? 
So there's always the first one. Doesn't matter for the team, but there's always one who starts. And then what we do is by monitoring his behavior, how he's doing his job, we understand what lacks and actually what's broken with him in. Sorry, Yelmer, but some parts are broken and we need to solve it by putting in somebody else. Actually, J Yelmer is one of the co-founders building a commodity startup. Maybe you can tell a little bit later on. Um, we have a workshop later on in which we together are going to help you guys, let's say, get an understanding of your biggest risk in your company, which you need to clarify, else you will fail. Okay? So, um, team dynamics. Team dynamics, probably one of the most important number three here, but you can do a lot of it to solve that issue. And it's about skill sets, and it's about, let's say, behavior and passion. Try to get an understanding before your project starts. And, to give you an answer on your question, sir, yes, change the group if you learn that one or two or three, I don't know, in your team have a different vision or opinion about the company you're going to build. Do it early in the process. If you do it later, you have a lot of pain. Um, so, any other questions about this sheet or how we mitigate other parts? Because I just mentioned three of a whole list. No? Okay. Um, so, actually, the only thing you do as a founder in the early days is get an understanding is there actually a problem? Is something broken in the system? If not, do something different. Don't do, let's say, the game thing. Hey, you could solve a pain for your customer and you can provide a lot of gain for your customer. But gains, it's hard to monetize. A pain, it hurts. Eh, that hurts. And somebody is always willing to, let's say, get rid of a pain. So try to understand where it hurts. Then you can monetize easily. Um, so, you as founders, actually, who is building a company right now? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, six. Good. Where are you in this graph? One to four. You have four in different stages. Cool, I want to speak to you. Where are you? Three. Efficiency. Good. Did you think about efficiency up front? Okay. A actually, efficiency, we always forget. So we built an awesome product, then we sell it to a customer, customer likes it, then we raise some capital, and then we scale like hell. Ah. And then the shit hit the fan. Why? We get more customers in, they have a lot of questions to us and the sales of the product goes down actually. So it's very good that you recognize number three, it is a big pain. Spend roughly, I would say six to 12 months before you scale to optimize your business processes. It will take you a little bit longer, but do it because the moment you that's done, you can scale to any place in the world and it will work out. Don't forget. Okay. So your job as founders is understand the problem. The problem actually with most of the founders, they think. We all think, right? And the problem with thinking is that we think in solutions. And that means actually, if you look to this one, if you think about a hammer, each problem is a nail. So try to make sure that you do not think about solutions in your mind yet. Because all your problems and all the understanding and all the learnings you get from customers you talk to will look like nails. Okay? So try to postpone solution thinking as long as possible. To, so you get a clear understanding of all the issues. Um, 
And if you talk to customers, don't talk to family and friends. The problem with family and friends, they will not say your baby is ugly. And that's what you need. You need people who say, listen, it doesn't look good. I don't believe your story. I think there it's not right or there is not right. That's where you learn most in your solution. So try, let them say that your baby is ugly as soon as possible so you can pivot and persevere on another year. Right? So don't talk with your mom. She will never say it's ugly. Right? She even will spend some euros on you or dollars or whatever. Don't talk with her. Um, so, talk about problems. Let people say your baby is ugly and avoid thinking of solutions. That's I think you should take at home. Um, the guys of the workshop, they are gone, right? They are over I there. I think okay. some of them are here and some of them have uh, okay. got back to work. Okay. Yep. Um, because the second part, I want to talk with you about how to find actually the idea. What should you do or what could you do to find an idea which you can build a company on? And what can you do in the first week? Right? Um, in the slides, I show you a process which we internally uh, used and I came to notice a book called Sprint. And it's written by the guys from Google Venture and they certainly use the same process, so that's cool. And I'm going to show you some printouts of the book and I'm going to tell you a story with it. And why we use it is it gives a good idea of what is broken in an industry and how you can find it out. So, the first thing you need to do is draw some sort of map, right? So after you have talked with customers and you spend some time with them, you're going back internally with your team and on one side you put all the actors. This is actually one of the drawings we did for a startup we are building right now. It's a healthcare company. And we draw their process. And what they want to do is they want to help clinical researchers to gain more participants in their studies. For example, in the US, if you look to clinical research for cancer, only 4% of all clinical studies, they continue. So 96% of all studies regarding new medicines collapse because there is no patient, right? So what we have done is we have drawn a map, you can see here, in which on one side you have all the actors, the patients, the doctors, and the people who, let's say, conduct the clinical studies. And on the other side, you have the clinical study by itself. And how do you bring or how does the process work from one side to get the clinical study done? That's what you draw on the board, okay? So for Uber, this is how you hail a taxi, right? Taxi and the one who wants to have a ride in a taxi. And then you draw a process in which you hail the taxi by your mobile or hand or whatever. An easy drawing. Any questions? How to do this? No, that's easy, right? Okay, so let's assume you have drawn your process. You know what the steps are. Then what you are going to do is the following. I want you to go outside. That's why I asked, are the workshop guys there? Because I know tomorrow they need to go outside and talk to customers and experts. And what they will, they will tell you, primarily experts will tell you what is broken in the system. And they will not say, oh, this is broken, that is broken. No, they will uh, give you ideas, but uh, it's hard to do this, or yeah, it takes a lot of time, that, or these kind of angles you get back. Now, the key thing for you is not to write, let's say, the problem by itself, or it is hard to, because it's a negative kind of thinking. You think, uh, you write it down on a post-it, how might we X, Y, Z? So post it to yourself as a question. 
how might we solve this? How might we get more clinical studies? How might we, etc. and forth. This is actually a method designed by Procter and Gamble a long time ago. How they persevere problems, not by looking at the problem by itself, but asking a question to you. And by asking a question to you, something different happens in your mind. Okay? Do you still follow me? Yeah? Questions? No? Good. Continue. Um, so, put the how might we questions there. And then, when you have done it, probably the whole board hangs on. Because you've talked to, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 people. And they're all experts and they explain to you a lot. So the, the board is full. The wall is full. And then what you do is you vote on them. With your group. Yeah, simple voting system. Put stickers on it and that's it. Not that hard. And then most vote wins. Quite easy. And you take the notes, which are most important, and you just put them on the process where they belong. Right? So what you now have is a process which is broken, and you know where it's broken. Okay? I don't think I have to add something on it, because this is pretty damn forward. Everybody can build a company. Right? More or less. Um, and if you have designed your process, and if you have, let's say, the stuff which is broken, then probably the project leader, startup CEO, however you call yourself, you stand up and you need to make a decision. Because there's still a lot of actors on there. And to build your first product, you cannot do it a big thing. You need to, stall to start small, really tangible. So pick one. Pick one actor which have a certain problem and try to solve that first. And if you have done that, then scale in solving problems for everybody else in the system. Right? But start small as possible. It is tangible, it is easy, and you gain a lot of traction in your development process, in your product. And you can sell early, which is important because one of the big failures is money, so you need to sell early. Right? So s start small. So for this example, we picked the coordinator and the algorithm by itself, which matches patient to clinical studies. And that's the first thing we design with our developers. And that's the first product we will launch with our developers. Okay? Good. How much time do I still have? 23? Good. Officially five minutes. I have one slide. So... Oh, then we do a Q&A. Okay. So when you have your process and you know what to build, are you going to build directly? Some say yes, some say no. We do one stop extra. For some you know, who knows this picture? Good. It's called the Lean Canvas. And you draw your problems, which was there. And on the other side you draw your customer, which was the coordinator. But not just the word coordinator. No, explain in detail the persona. So make a description of the persona so you know them very well. Think about where did they do their study. What's their age? More females than male, that kind of stuff. And then try to get a picture even from Google. Just browse. Did you see a picture in which you say, he or she is really looking at the people I talk to? That's how you describe a persona. And if you have that mental picture in your mind, you're able to build a product for them. Right? So one side problem, other side personas, and in the middle is, let's say, the solution you're going to build. So you have the pains, which you already learned. How are you going to, let's say, redigate the pains? How are you going to elevate the pain so it, it's gone? That's the unique value proposition. All the other stuff, is actually not important at, it at this phase, right? Because it's about money. It's fine, but first you need to build a product and you need to ship it. 
And then when there's a customer who says, ah, I'm interested, then it's time to think about money. Right? So also the numbers in there represent when you do what over time. Okay. I think I'm wrap up right now. It's time. We have a workshop over there. So if you want to do this process or more or less this process, understand how you get a real tangible problem and what your first test should be to run it or need help with your current business and you say, listen, I have a business, but I don't know how to make money with it or how to scale it or anything else. We are there for you guys. Any questions for me? I was going to say, maybe there's a couple of questions in the audience. Anybody? Yeah, I'm on my way. We're going to start really simply. What's your name and what's your question? Uh, hi, my name is Louise. Uh, in the first slide, I show about like uh, which why business fail. Uh, there, the last one is like bad location. So, what do you think about remote business? People who don't want to well, not sharing the same space, but they work together, the same yep. probably like online business, stuff like that. Yeah, it works. Um, at Holland Startup, we do it by, let's say, using remote developers. So we, in our premises, we do not have developers. We use virtual teams for the development part. Um, actually, one of, um, there is a uh, stock photo uh, company, uh, Shutterstock, I believe they, uh, they're mentioned. Sorry? Yeah, something like that. Um, it's a, ven a big venture-backed company, and I know for a fact they do not have an office. Right? So they, it's only, let's say, a virtual company in which even the CEO doesn't have a space. He just lives at home and works at home. And they communicate over Slack to each other. So it is feasible, but you, um, you can look it up at Google you need to change your business processes because communication in this way is a little bit harder because you're not sitting together and not sitting together and see let's say the not verbal talk but let's say the mimic of the face that explains a lot to people so you need to change your business but it's definitely possible and i know very successful companies with it yeah there's another great social media company buffer they have people all around the world. The guys from uh, Automatic WordPress, maybe you know, those guys are scattered all around the world as yeah. well. I think I would just add this. Unless you've got a very, very good reason to build a remote company, all you're doing is adding more risk. So you've got to weigh up, is it necessary to add yeah. that risk or not? We got another question in the audience? See, that's the problem, Robert Young. When you tell such a good story, there's no room left for questions. I hope it was good. I, think I so. enjoyed very much. Thank you very much. If no questions, I'm there. I stick for some minutes. Yep. See you coming. Actually, and there. This is this is a There's huge room. We're about here, here in the middle. Sit there. Number one, entrepreneurship T one. Take the space in yep. the middle if you want to come and join the workshop. This stuff is gold mine. If you've never seen it before, it'll uh, it'll blow your mind. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge. Oh, wait, one moment. I know. This is your is first campus. Tent? This is your first campus party, yes, isn't it? It is. He's not staying over, so we figured we'd give uh, you the. No, tent. I can't stay. Or you can take it home and have the campus experience, I campus party experience at home. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Robert Jan Hunza. Thank you.